Ogade Khan, the man who laid the foundations of the Mongol Empire. You probably know the Mongol Empire from the iconic battles that took place during its expansion. Genghis Khan managed to turn a handful of nomadic tribes in Asia into the largest contiguous empire in history. Although the most celebrated and iconic personality of this empire was the man just named, there is a much less recognised but equally important legacy, Ogade Khan, his son. So today, we will talk about the man in charge of structuring the foundations of this empire. Stay until the end of the video to know how Ogadai did not live in the shadow of his mythical father. Origins and first movements as a great Khan. Ogadai was born in 1186. He was the third son of the marriage between Genghis Khan and Borte. By his father's will, Ogadai was appointed Grand Khan of Mongolia in the year 1229 at the age of 43. His first decisions as Great Khan were similar to those of his father, to subdue everything that stood in his way. It was for this reason that he resumed one of the campaigns that Genghis had left unfinished after his death, the conquest of the Jin Empire in northern China. He and his brother Tuluai managed to gain allies from the Song Dynasty, who had the Jin Empire as a common enemy. Soon after, a huge army of Mongols and Chinese managed to take Kaifeng, the capital of the Jin Empire. The emperor had no choice but to commit suicide to avoid falling into the hands of the bloody conquerors who were spreading throughout his territory. But this was a very hasty move on the part of Emperor Jin, as Ogadai's stance on the territories he was actually taking were very different from his father's. In fact, historians claim that Jin committed suicide because he was carried away by the fame of Genghis, who was ruthless and tyrannical in every conquest. Ogadai would probably have used Jin's political power, since he himself had a former Jin family official as his right hand man. This demonstrates the enormous wisdom with which Ogadai moved. A decision like the one he made in 1229, when he appointed Yellow Chu Tsai as a governor of the conquered territories in China, had not been seen before. This man had served in as an official of the Jin Empire and knew perfectly the administrative and political principles that the Chinese used in the proper deployments of power. It's because of this that Ogadai became convinced that he could make better use of the conquered places if he exploited all the resources of the place and used the native population as labour. After implementing the Chinese criteria of administration, Ogadai realised that he could have an effective organisation in each of the territories controlled by the Mongol Empire. Expansion into most of Asia and Europe While cultural exchange was something Ogadai was passionate about, the war heritage he received from his father was very strong. That ambition to enter the battlefields and subdue his adversaries led him to move his troops to new horizons. First, the Great Khan declared his plans to conquer Korea, the Song dynasty that assisted him against the Jin Empire and the Kipchak people of Turkey. In fact, he also declared war on the European allies that the Turks had. The first of the conquests was in the Koryo Kingdom, located in the Korean Peninsula. The Mongols subdued everything in their path, and the troops that the Koreans mobilised to defend their territory quickly presented the white flag and surrendered. By 1238, the Mongols had reached the core of Korea, and the Korean High Command had no choice but to sue for peace. A year earlier, in 1237, the Russians assassinated one of the Mongol messengers who were negotiating the war. This unleashed the fury of Batu, Ogadai's nephew, who had been placed as general of the army. The Mongols began to advance into the steppes and subdued everything in their path. By 1239, the Mongol army had besieged all of Kiev and began to move the rearguard into the surrounding countries. In less than two years, they managed to penetrate Poland, Hungary, Bulgaria, 
Croatia, Serbia, and Austria. Almost simultaneously, Ogadai ordered the invasion of the Indian Valley and the Mongol forces besieged Lahore, which was under the control of the Delhi Sultanate. The Indians were completely massacred by the Mongol army and had to withdraw from the place. Last years, death and legacy. Ogadai planned, organised and executed the order for the conquests to be carried out, but it was his generals who went to the battlefield. It is said that he led a very lascivious life and indulged in pleasures. In fact, this is probably what led to his death on December 11th, 1241. Although there are no clear records to prove this, it's popularly believed among historians that his death was caused by his addiction to alcohol, which probably resulted in kidney failure. This mythical character was the second to occupy the noble title of Kagan, which literally means Great Khan. His father had divided the Mongol Empire into four Khanates, and Ogadai had been appointed as the most important among the brothers in power. His constant desire for expansion and the subjugation of every people gave him a fearsome reputation among all the civilizations of the time. But his intelligence and wisdom in exploiting each territory made him one of the most honorable personalities in Asia. So it was not unreasonable to negotiate peace with him. After his death, all the aspirants to power gathered to honour the great Khan and bid him farewell in a traditional Mongolian funeral ceremony. After the clan assembly known as Kurultai, the successor chosen to inherit the throne was Ogadai's son Guyuk. Thanks to the Mongol expansions, trade between East and West was affected in a very positive way. In fact, the Silk Road was re-established thanks to the moves made by Ogadai. He initiated the war against the Chinese Empire, a conflict that lasted 45 years and came to an end in 1280 with the reign of Kublai Khan. He's probably not as famous as his father, who was transcended in Eastern and Western culture as an extremely preponderant historical figure. But Ogadai was able to lay the foundations and pillars of a Mongol Empire that became the second largest in history. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us to grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.